Hi, my name is Francieria Moore with the Prosperity Agenda and welcome to Coaching Up Close, our mini webinar series designed to work some quick tips into your busy schedule to help you improve your coaching skills. But first, let me introduce TPA. We are working to end persistent poverty, changing the way we think about, build programs for, and coach families under financial stress. Coaching is, of course, a big part of our DNA, and we work with organizations all over the country on their coaching programs. Before we jump in, if you're joining us live, we'll have a question and answer session at the end of the webinar, so save your questions. Now, let's get started on today's session, which is about coaching to the bottom line. Of course, as always, I must remind you that coaching is built on the premise that participants have the answer. However, a session can lose its focus when outside circumstances and situations take center stage in the mind of your participant, making it difficult for you as the coach to determine which way this particular session should go with this participant. During those times, it is very helpful to have two skills. So we're gonna talk about two skills today, two coaching skills. These are situational skills. Um, in previous Coaching Up Close, we've discussed our core four. The core four coaching skills are holding the focus, <clears throat> powerful questions, reflective listening, and holding the focus, powerful questions, reflective listening, and my mind just went blank. Uh, there are four of them, and I will get you the fourth one. I'm going to blame this on a little bit of quarantine brain. I don't know if anyone else is on lockdown in your home, but I may be give, getting a little stir crazy. Asking permission. Thank you. Asking permission is the fourth uh, core for coaching skill. Today, we're going to work on two of our situational coaching skills, meaning you use these skills as the situation calls for. You will use clearing when a, when a participant comes in and they just have something going on, there's an outside circumstance, there's perhaps a national emergency or crisis that's happening, and you notice that their conversation continues to move toward that thing. Or you cannot seem to push the, uh, the session forward because they seem to be stuck on one particular uh, area. Clearing is where you allow space to do exactly what the title says, clear. You allow space for the participant to vent, to get it out, to talk about their frustrations or their fears, to talk about their concerns. Um, and, and it is very helpful to put a time limit on this because with, with anything, we can have a little bit too much clearing. We wanna make sure that we're as productive as possible keeping with one of our core four skills, which is holding the focus. But first we have to figure out what their focus is. By allowing your participant to clear, you can hope, hopefully allow them to get past some of the emotional things and get down to what is the value that they are looking for, what is the resource that they need, uh, so that you can determine as the coach which of the three roles that you should play. So remember, as a coach, there are three roles that you can play. You can share information, you can explore options, or you can plan it's really hard to know what a participant might need from you in a session if they have a lot of other things weighing on them and they can't seem to get past it. In those times, I like to provide maybe two to three, depending on minutes, depending on how long my session is. I like to give several minutes for the person to just vent, for them to clear, for them to get it out. Has anyone ever had any uh, bad customer service experience? I'm just gonna imagine that everybody's raising their hand, okay? So if you've ever had a bad customer service experience, thank you, thank you, thank you for those raising your hands. Absolutely, we've all experienced it. Where we've called a 1-800 number or we've gone up to the customer service desk and we are frustrated beyond belief, okay? Maybe I'm just talking about myself here, but I know there are times when I am frustrated with a product or a service. And when I call to speak to customer service, I just want them to hear my plight. I just want them to hear about how frustrating it was, about how disappointed I am, how much of an inconvenience it was. And I mean, I get it. What, what does it do for you, friend, in those moments? But it does do something to feel heard. It, feel, it does do something to help calm you when you're able to get out your frustration 
in a non-judgmental way, in a way that is not necessarily leading you. I'm not trying to lead you as a coach toward my outcome or the thing that I want. I'm not in any way tied to the outcome of what you decide. There is no judgment here. This is open space for your participants to vent and to clear in the same way that we would hope that if we have a challenge or if we have something going on, we would have people in our lives that would allow us to clear that frustration so that we can get back to the main focus of the meeting, okay? Um, so this is one way that a session can be thrown off track. If you don't allow space for someone to clear, for someone to vent, for someone to get it out. Another way that a, a session can quickly be uh, thrown out of focus is when a participant comes in and maybe something great happens, because I want to take it away from the negative. Let's like, let's, let's liven it up a little bit, okay? Participant comes in, and they're really excited about some great news that has happened and they are just over the moon about it. And then they spend time talking about it and talk about it. And then that thing leads to another tangent. And before you know it, those precious few minutes meant for catching up have turned into several minutes of now just talking. Um, talking is always great because you, uh, you can use this time to explore, explore values um, and, and beliefs that the participant holds that may be helpful in your session with them later. But what happens when that talking isn't really providing uh, fruit? It's not really bringing us to anything. This is where the tool of bottom lining, the skill of bottom lining is very, very helpful. Bottom lining is getting very clear into the bottom line with your participant about what exactly they are trying to communicate with you okay so if I were to go back to my example about customer service when you call in to the customer service and they let you vent and they let you clear and then you know next thing you know you're talking about your your dog and how you took him for a walk and everything a customer service representative might say great I understand and what how what would you like for me to do to help you with this today that's a great, powerful question to help bring a person back to the center or the focus of the, the session for today. What would you like for us to work on today? What about that thing is important for me to know? Um, how can I use this information to get us to a great uh, working point today? All of those are examples of questions that you can use to kind of help bring a person back uh, sometimes, you know, that that is just a simple thing that they, they need to be brought back to the center of the conversation. Um, Devin, one of our master coaches here, he also likes to use the method of just saying their name. Sometimes when a person gets really excited and they're, and they're talking and, and, and not really focused on one thing, they're kind of just going from thing to thing to thing. Um, again, allow a little space for them to clear. Um, but when you think that it is appropriate, you can simply just say their name. Uh, if, I am, if I'm caught up in a, a fit of excitement or something's going on and I'm just going and going and going, sometimes I, the right person can say, Fran, Fran. And it causes me to stop and go, yes, huh? And take a breath for a second. Sometimes when life is really all around us, and those that we work with, they just need someone to simply say their name or ask them, what is it from this information that you want to focus on today? Um, we, we have a lot going on right now. And, and in the midst of that, depending on how you're doing your work uh, with those that you are serving, it is going to be very important that you learn how to balance the skills of clearing and bottom lining to make sure that we're maximizing on our time with our clients through bottom lining, but we're also providing space for them to open up their executive function skills because of all of the pressure that is on all of us currently. Um, and so these are skills that you can easily work into your conversations um, with your participants to help them also figure out how to manage so that you can scaffold how to help them manage those emotions and feelings and excitement that may also come up. Um, but as a coach, it is important for you to get down to the bottom line about what is being communicated, understanding that coaching is built on the premise that participants have the answers. 
but we can't get to the answers if they have a lot of things on them and they just need to clear. So it's really great to just give them space to clear, okay? Um, that is all I have for today. Thank you for watching. Join us next month for more coaching tips and resources and be sure to stick around for the question and answer portion. And of course, if you have any questions about our coaching training program, or if you would like to sign up for the next Coaching Up Close mini webinar, visit us at theprosperityagenda.org.